Hi, welcome to the video. My name is Nychronic, and today we're taking a look at the Zur, his location, his random rolls, and my recommendations for September 23rd, 2022. Man, you just realize it's 2022. You know there are some people born after the year 2000 who can drink in the US? Ooh, time is past. Anyways, the Zur can be found in the Winding Cove on the EDZ. Just make your way on top of this big old cliff right here, and you can find the Zur right next to the precipice. And of course, this is the high overview of his inventory. Fortunately, we only have one set of legendary armor this time, not two. First up today for the exotic weapon, we have the Vigilance Wing. It's actually a decent weapon, especially in the Crucible as a five round burst. It actually has a very high fire rate, but surprisingly, it's actually very accurate and very stable over range. On top of that, you also get health regeneration, increased movement when your allies are killed, and you also get more performance when you're the last member of the fire team. Kind of like a Trials of Osiris style weapon, but still very good in sixes. TLDR, if you like the peace of mind, this thing will give you some peace of mind. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. And it's got a magazine of 50, I mean, come on. Following that, for the Hunter Exotic, we have the Raiden Flux, and I really like this ornament on it. It's also one of the best exotics in the game, because quick and successive attacks for the Arc Staff increase its damage output and duration. It's not nearly as powerful as it used to be, they've built in and baked in a bit more into the actual subclass, and now with Arc 3.0, things are a lot better even more. That being said, with Raiden Flux, or Stirred to Scales, Arc Staff becomes some of the highest total super damage in the game, which also means you have a very, very long-lasting super, you can also reflect with it, you can also have heavy resistance while dodging overall just a very underrated super in my opinion and this makes it a lot better as far as the role goes i guess you'd like to see a lot of intellect and mobility although it has more resilience recovery and strength not a bad combination 62 is a good average it really depends if it fits with your build following that for the titan exotic we have the aeon safe which is exactly the same as all of the aeon based exotics aeon safe swift and the other one Essentially, this last perk here is going to be that exotic perk, and you can pick one of these different perks to give you a bunch of different bonuses and more bonuses for allies who also have Aeon. The problem is, Sect of Insight, the ability to spawn in special and heavy ammo for your teammates, doesn't require your teammates to also have Aeon, making it an ideal option to have one of these in like a Grandmaster Nightfall, or even in a raid. So it's one of those things that's a good default to have that's just very useful in the higher level play. And furthermore, total stats of 66 is quite high, with high recovery and high intellect, it's a pretty good roll. Although these days, I definitely favor towards having a lot more resilience, but it depends on your build. Following that for the Warlike Exotic, we have the Luna Faction Boost. It's probably one of the more common exotics to use in raids, especially during DPS phase. You need one Warlock with a well and Luna Faction to max out your reload speed and double your range also helps as well. That being said, you pretty much never use it anywhere else. And furthermore, it's also somewhat of a boring exotic. It's just one of those things that you need to have at least one of, and you'll use it sometimes, but it's just, I don't, I don't know, I don't like it anymore. As far as the role goes, this particular exotic, because you're only using it in raids, you always have your super when you need it, so you don't particularly need any stats, so stats are totally up to you. Total 62 is around the average, so it's okay. Following that, let's take a look at the legendary weapons. First up, we have a 7 Seraph VY7, a precision frame with 4th times the charm and dragonflight. Not a bad combination, but you definitely need a lot more range stuff in here, and I think there are definitely better perks on this weapon. And for some reason, I've never really liked this one, even though it is a precision frame and a lot of people do like it. Following that, Ikelos, in my opinion, a much better SMG. Aggressive frames are my favorite. Dynamic and surrounded, probably one of the better combinations, although it definitely could have a lot more range stuff on it. It's a decent roll. 100 recoil direction, by the way, which is very very nice. Following that, a better precision frame, but still not amazing, we have a friction fire, which is a kill spring, kill spring, a killing wind wellspring. Not a bad combo, but again, you definitely would like a lot more range things on it. Recoil direction 95 is pretty good. After that, 7 Seraph CQC 12, lead from gold, definitely an excellent thing to have, although you'd like to see assault mag and also auto loading. And of course, some range or handling stuff depending on you're doing PvP or PvE. Following that, the Fractithist, a very popular precision buckshot frame that people use in the Crucible, although this is definitely not a Crucible role. Definitely need more range and fold choke for sure. Following that, Coduello, another popular rocket for a long time, although I believe it can have auto-loading plus lasting impressions and impact casing, definitely some better options on it. And of course, we have the Gnawing Hunger, one of my favorite weapons in the game, Zen Moment Kill Clip, one of the better rolls you can have on it, and it does have a decent set of range and stability options. I would highly recommend picking this up, especially if you like auto-rifles of any kind, 600s, and Gnawing Hunger especially are one of the best in the game. Following that, let's take a look at the legendary armors. Keep in mind that this is just for the titans. The other classes will have different stuff. This one's going to be a 61 high strength, high resilience. It is okay. We have a 58 with resilience. 
not really high enough. 62 with resilience and intellect, a little bit better. And finally, a 58 with resilience, intellect, not really my favorite. Definitely going to be the helmet and the arms going to be the best pick here, but not the best. The best pick? That's not the best? How could it be the best? That's not the best. <laughs> Following that, let's take a look at the different exotic options. First up, the Hawkmoon Hipfire Grip. As I say before, and I always say, Rangefinder is almost always the better option. Although it does have a recoil direction, making that recoil up to 100, which is something I do like to see. TLDR on Hawkmoon, I recommend Rangefinder and one of these two controlling recoil direction, and then of course just range after that. After that, we have the Dead Man's Tail. Four times the charm is okay, although I do like to see Moving Target or Vorpal here, and the rest just kind of range if you can, the rest up to you. And I guess recoil direction again is also nice, so you can get that up to 99. But hip firing, I've never really found an issue with recoil direction. And finally, this exotic engram and any exotic engram you ever receive will guarantee you an exotic you've never received before, and it will be a high stat roll. Unless you have all the exotics, then it will be random. 65, not a bad roll. Very high intellect, but this exotic is not very good. Wow! I hit that chest directly. <laughs> I did not expect to be that accurate. <laughs> and of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, a big thank you to Mom and Dad, Pastor Lonzo, Mark's World, Mighty Stu, Bikers, Sooner Panther, Case Dragon, Follow Support on Patreon. And that's it. You guys did enjoy? My name is Sir And I'll see you guys on the next one.